plus. Can you imagine taking a one-way trip to Mars? One way. Would you go? No. Well, plans are being made by these would-be space travellers to establish a permanent colony on the Red Planet. I found out why they're willing to leave Earth and never return. Later. It's true. Unbelievable, but true. Now, many people dream of going on a trip of a lifetime, maybe travelling around the world or going on that perfect holiday, but few as ever imagined going away for a lifetime, never seeing our loved ones again. But that is exactly what my next guests are hoping for when they go on a mission to Mars. True. Here to explain more, the man organising the expedition, Baz Lansdorp, and two of the British candidates who hope to start new lives on the Red Planet. And it's not April the 1st. Maggie Lou and Ryan McDonald. <laughs> Welcome from the rocks. Baz, lovely to see you. So, tell us about this. This is actually going to happen then, Baz. Absolutely. Going to Mars is going to happen because humans have spread all over the world. We've always gone where technology allows us to go. And right now, that's Mars. Mars is the next, the next place to go, the next giant leap for mankind. So when is this trip going to happen? Uh, our first crew is uh, scheduled to leave in 2024. So, uh, that's 11 years, so 10 years from now. That's right. That's not long. That's not long, and this is made possible because, if you, as you've already emphasized, uh, it's a mission of permanent settlement, a one-way trip, and this makes it possible to do it with current-day technology, with technology that's available today. So what's going to happen, in a nutshell? They're all going to be trained and then fly off to Mars. How long will the journey take? The uh, journey takes about seven months, so about the same time as people spent in the International Space Station. So they combine in the spacecraft for seven months, they then get there. What happens when they arrive on Mars? They will find a habitable outpost that has been prepared by, by robots, uh, so without human presence there. And they will, they will start constructing that settlement. So they, it, it, it's operational, but they need to deploy more solar panels, interconnect the modules, grow their own food, because on Mars people will be growing their own food. But they can't come back. That's absolutely right. And that sounds very dramatic to a lot of people, but... Don't forget that people have done that in all ages. People have migrated to Australia a hundred years ago. They, they'd buy a one-way ticket for a boat. But they know they can go out and breathe fresh air in Australia and discover things and find greenery and rivers and lakes. And that, They don't know that on Mars. That's absolutely true, but don't forget that humans are also not native to England. If, we were take, if all our technology was taken away, we would probably not survive the night because it's very cold <laughs> and we don't have a, a thick fur. But you can, if you're up, at, well, when you come from Yorkshire, you can take anything, really, I think. <laughs> Maggie and Ryan, this is an astonishing thing. You know, I read this and thought, good Lord, this is an amazing thing to say, yes, I am prepared to go to Mars and live there for the rest of my life, Maggie, when you're so young. So why, Maggie? Um, I think for a scientist like me and Ryan, um, the pursuit of knowledge always outweighs the pursuit of happiness. So being able to do this amazing thing that no one's ever done before is what we like have been trying to do all our lives and been wanting to do. Even all if our you lives. live another 80 years, you'd be happy to go and spend it on, on that thing behind you, that, the red planet. Well, there's a lot of things to discover on Mars. There's a lot of things that we don't know, like robots go up there, but they can't dig really deep under the soil. Who knows what's under there? There could be, like, living beings under there. There could be dead bodies under there. Well, there, but there are, and all those things are in Britain. And there's a gardener, I know that, when you dig down, you finally find quite a lot. <laughs> Ryan, this is astonishing. I, it makes me, because as a, a confirmed countryman and a, and a Brit, and loving this country and loving the seasons, for instance, how well explored are you in Britain? Do you know the islands of Scotland? Do you know Pembrokeshire? Do you know these islands well enough to say, no, I'm going to go to Mars instead? Oh yeah, so I, I have um, been all around Britain and travelled to loads of different places, but it just, there's something really fundamental about exploration. You go and see other places in the UK and you think, well, what else could there be around the next corner, under the next rock? And this is just an extension of it. In the UK we have a great history of explorers going all around the world, this is just the next logical step. But generally speaking, they could get a ship back. Here you can get a train back, you can fly back. That, it's a big mental prospect, isn't it, that of going there and never being able to come back. They did it with prisoners way back by sending them to Australia, you know, but now being sent to Mars, some people would regard this as a life sentence they didn't want to endure. But remember that lots of the prisoners that actually went to Australia, even after they'd um, completed their sentence and had the opportunity to go back, they chose to stay because they had a new life that they'd created there for themselves. Some of them started families there. Um, the goal of this is much the same. We want to set up a permanent settlement and we want to live there. I don't want to come back because I know um, that this is the future of the human race. 
And now, how many yeah. people were of Maggie and Ryan's disposition? How many applicants did you have for this quest? Uh, we, we started with about 200,000 applicants from all over the world, yeah. from more than 140 different countries. You've narrowed it down now to how many? To about 1,000 from just over 100 countries uh, right now. So you two are in the thousand at the moment, so you yes. don't know yet whether you're selected. Baz, how many people will you select for this? Uh, in 2024, we're sent, going to send four people. And uh, every two years, there's four more people uh, going to Mars in our plan. But because everybody you're looking at now is going to be 10 years older. Yeah, absolutely. And, and 10 years better trained. But also, you're going to have to look very closely at their health, monitor their health. You, you want people, obviously, who are, who are fit and likely to survive out there. What sort of conditions are there on Mars? Will they be able to go outside at all? No, uh, when you go outside, you'll have to wear a suit like that one, uh, to, a, a pressure suit, because there's only 1% atmosphere on Mars. Uh, so you, you really need to protect yourself very well from the environment. Ryan, Maggie, I could offer you the rest of your life in my greenhouse without ever going out, which is basically <laughs> what, what's happening here. This confinement does... I'm not being negative about it, I'm just sort of going through my own mind what I would feel. I would feel terribly claustrophobic about the whole thing. Does that not worry you? We have a greenhouse. You're certainly welcome to come if you want. <laughs> um, we're going to be growing our own um, vegetables and our food supply hydroponically, actually, so ah, agriculture is going to be a big aspect you can't take the Yorkshire of Dales with you or... <laughs> The Isle of Wight or Cornish countryside. Well, so long as we can grow tea on Mars, we'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're clearly both very excited about this. What sort of age of people are you going to be looking at? What's uh, the age limitations? There's uh, an, a lower age limit of 18 because we want adults only to, uh, to be able to apply. And we'll train them for about uh, 10 years, so 28 will be the, the youngest person that could go to Mars. Upper age is more determined by health than it is by mm -hmm. uh, actual age. Would you go? Are you going? Well, I started Mars One because I wanted to go to Mars myself, and uh, I, I do still. But imagine how difficult it is to be on that first crew in, in the isolation that you already discussed. That's a very big challenge, yeah. and I'm certainly not a qualified person for that, so I'm, I'm uh, more up for one of the next crews that's going. How much is it going to cost? It's about six billion US dollars to get the first four people on Mars. And six billion dollars, that's over a billion dollars a piece. How are you raising the money? Uh, basically by making this mankind's mission to Mars. So we want people to be involved like they are, for instance, in the Olympic Games. So the revenue of the Olymp International yeah. Olympic Committee was about four billion US dollars here in the, in the London is it, Olympics. Is it definitely going to happen or are you hoping it's going to happen. It's an extremely ambitious project and there's so many things that can go wrong, but it can happen. There's nothing, there's no hurdle that we can see that makes this impossible and that's why we will do our best to make it happen. I believe and, it will. And you're confident, hopefully, of being picked, hoping you're going to be picked. Oh, yeah, definitely. Excited, definitely. Maggie? Yes, definitely. What, what more exciting thing could there be to do with your life, really? Because everywhere on Earth has already been explored. This is the chance you'll get to go down in history if you go for this. Mm -hmm. No one remembers who the... Um, well, in a thousand years from now, no one will remember who was the President of the United States, but they will remember who was the first person on Mars. And it will inspire a lot of students, like kids, to mm -hmm. study STEM subjects at science, technology, engineering and maths, which is really needed since... Um, David Willits you, um, just recently announced 80 million funding for the UK space industry. So we need like science y kind okay. of. Okay, as long as you need horticulture as well, I rather <laughs> think you might to eat. My thanks to Baz, to Maggie, and to Ryan. Thank you very much for being <laughs> Amazing story. Time for a break now, but when we return, cereal, champagne, and chocolate digesters. Can you tell the difference between branded varieties and supermarkets' own? We put our favourites to the test. Plus, we reveal the winner of today's ding dong. Is it time we stop using cash? See you in a moment.